Hi, this is Linda with the Life Station Express, the relay station. We bring the news to you. I just wanted to come in a little bit and make another recipe and hope you're having a good day. Um, we're still on quarantine. It is April 28th, 2020, and I needed something for my recipe, so I had to run to the store, which is a total ordeal in itself. Um, I, you probably don't want to get me started. <laughs> Um, you know, we have to go in a certain door, out a certain door, follow the arrows, keep our distance. It's very, very antisocial, um, what we're going through right now. I do have several opinions about what we're going through right now, why we're going through this quarantine, what has happened to this country, why we are walking in fear. Um, I'm probably not going to share those opinions because not everybody shares the same idea I do, but I did go to the store and the one thing that I do comply with is I, well, I kind of don't. <laughs> um, we're supposed to wear a mask now and I went to the store in and out whenever I wanted to up until this mask wearing thing and uh, I'm in Pennsylvania and um, I refuse to buy a mask so I haven't bought a mask, but I do have a scarf and I use my scarf to, you know, yeesh. I put it up over my ears and it covered my mouth and my, my nose. Uh, so I complied. kind of feel weird about doing that because I'm thinking if I comply to that, what else would I comply to when tough things get tough? It's something to think about, really. Um, anyway, okay, I'm going to read the recipe and we'll get started from there. This is for sweet Russian cabbage soup. And... Um, it's a, you know, it's different than the other recipes I made, which were quick, like snacky kind of things. But this is for a hearty soup, and I found this recipe online last year, and I thought I would go ahead and make it today and just share it. And we'll see how this video turns out. Um, I don't want to make it too long. Anyway, I'll read the directions and the ingredients for you, and then I'm just going to go through and do it really, you know, quickly. Um... You need a small head of cabbage, a pound of ground beef, one can of diced tomatoes, one eight ounce can of tomato sauce. You need a container of beef broth, one onion, two tablespoons of vinegar, one quarter cup of sugar, which I do not use. I will substitute that with a little bit of artificial sweetener, a stevia blend. A quarter cup of sugar is just a whole lot, so I don't think it... I really don't think it needs it. Um, water, three cloves of chopped garlic. I don't have, I never have garlic cloves, but I do have minced garlic in the fridge, so I'll be using that. Um, salt and pepper, and my vinegar is good old Bragg's apple cider vinegar. I'll be using that. Um, I think I said the measurements, two tablespoons of vinegar, a quarter cup of sugar substitute, salt and pepper, some water, and the garlic. Brown the beef and add the other vegetables, salt and pepper, sugar and vinegar. You stir it all up and then you, um, the way I do it, and I've kind of improvised myself with the way I like to do this recipe. I put it in the Dutch oven. I'll just show it to you. It's easier than putting the camera somewhere. Uh, I put it in the Dutch oven and I, and I cook the thawed pound of ground beef in about an inch of water. Just chop, chop, you know, chop it up and get it all mixed up in that. No meatballs or anything. You just chop it up. I chop up my onion and I put that in there and I put the tomatoes in there and that's just all been cooking a little bit together. Um, what I had to go to the store for was um, the beef broth. So you can use that I'll probably put all of this in because by the time you get a whole head of cabbage in there, it's pretty full of, you know, it's pretty dense with the vegetables. So I'll probably put the whole thing in. I'll just wait and see how it looks when I'm finished. And um, I think that's it. I'm going to go ahead and I've got the tomatoes in there. I've got the onion and the beef together. And I cooked all that in about that much inch, inch and a half of water in the bottom. So I'm just going to put... The, the garlic in there. Call it for three cloves. Uh, I'm not huge on garlic. I'd rather have onion flavor than garlic. Um, so I'm just putting about, a, I'll put about a teaspoon of that chopped garlic in there. Now, 
for the vinegar. Let me get my measuring spoons. Two tablespoons. So I have one that is two tablespoons. So I'm going to just put that in the pan as well. Okay. And then it calls for, again, a quarter cup of sugar, really. I mean, if this is, if you're Russian and this is how you make, uh, you know, your, your sweet Russian cabbage soup, I'm going to put right so far one packet of, I have the stevia of erythritol and monk fruit blend. And I'm using that. I would just put stevia, but I ran out. So this is what I have right now. And I'm using that. Actually, I'm going to put two because I, I know that's not going to be enough. Uh, I'll put two of those in. And I'll taste it later to see if we not need more because it really is a really good soup when you mix the, um, when you have the vinegar and the sweetness. It's a sweet and sour, I guess you would call it, a sweet and savory, whatever. But it's, it's just really, really good. Um, I'm going to turn the heat up just a little bit. And... Uh, it, I do not have, I'm an improviser, I do not have um, an 8 ounce can of tomato sauce. Um, I did have the, the full size can of diced uh, tomatoes. I keep those on hand. Um, let's see, that was, I get this brand, it's the non-GMO. Whenever I can find non-GMO anything, oh and I was so excited, let me show you this. Let's see if I've got one, where are you? I found Del Monte has non-GMO corn. And, you know, you don't need corn. We don't eat corn like we eat corn every night. But you don't, you don't need corn until you need it. You know, for a recipe or something, you want a little bit of corn for something or you want to... It's just something that, you know, even if I used half of this, I would put the other half in the freezer in a baggie and just save it because I found non-GMO corn. So thank you, Del Monte. I was just really excited about that. Um, so this that I used, this is the same thing I used in the soup. It is Hunt's non-GMO. I'm not sure where my, I'm not really sure whether to look in this phone where the camera is. I always look like I'm looking off to the side. Anyway, non-BPA liner, non-GMO verified, fire roasted. This is fire roasted. The ones I've used were not. They were just regular. But, again, I don't have an 8-ounce can of tomato sauce. So, there we go. <laughs> Hunts. And this is the, supposed to be natural, you know. you got to read the labels, people. Uh, no high fructose corn syrup, which is, is fine. But then when you read the label, yeah, there's sugar in it, which it's ketchup, so it's going to have some sugar. So I'm just going to squirt um, a little bit of ketchup in there. It's going to be plenty tomatoey because it's got a whole can of diced tomatoes. There we go. <laughs> there was the tomato. There was the ketchup. All right, so I've got everything in there but the cabbage and the, um, the beef broth. So I'm going to go ahead and next I'm just going to pour this beef broth in here. I'm going to go ahead and use the whole thing. I think that I think that's going to be perfect, the perfect amount. Um, it's going to put my Dutch oven about two-thirds, two-thirds full. That's what I had to go for. Um, I, didn't, I thought I had this, but I packed stuff some away for the, uh, for the camper, so I didn't have it here. Um, anyway, going to the store is a trip. I'll tell you what. You know what? We went to Walmart, and not in this town, but in another town, Saturday. And I have a confession. Um, I have not had a good attitude during this whole lockdown. I don't think we should have been locked down, just my opinion. Uh, I think it was done backwards. I think we should quarantine people when they're ill and let other people do what they need to do. The economy's, you know, been wrecked in so many ways. Small businesses, I'm so, so sad and have been praying for people with small, I've listened on the radio and I hear people with small businesses trying to keep things going. The car dealers, bring your car in for service. Call us ahead of time. We'll come in, you know, whatever they can do to get business. 
and it just breaks my heart. Um, the restaurants, we have a Ruby Tuesdays here, and they have a huge sign in the front of the store that says, Open! Well, of course they're not open, but you can get, you can call in and you can get your meal, and they'll bring it, you know, curbside. And that's what most people are doing, curbside. Um, Perkins is doing that, that we have that here. Um, Panera Bread, you know, you can go drive through. I just went through town, and the McDonald's is wrapped around the building, the drive through So, I think patronizing, you know, the small businesses in, in the best way we can, it would be a great thing to do because so many, um, it's, just, it's just horrible for them right now. Um, I work at home. And, and my business is pretty slow right now, but I don't have to go out. And I'm very fortunate with that. My husband's still working, so we're, it's fortunate for, for us that way. But, you know, my goodness, I'm, I'm just not so sure things were handled well. Um, and I'm talking about not, anyway, I can't go there. Nationwide, I don't know. Statewide, I'm not real happy with the state way things have been locked down the way they are. Um, I do believe there's an agenda, and if, if you know me, you'll know that. Um, I do believe uh, there are things going on under the scenes, behind the scenes. But anyway, we do the best we can. We keep praying. We pray for our government leaders. Um, we ask the Lord to show them what they need to see. We ask the Lord to give them, you know, instructions from His hand and not just to be going with the, what everybody else is doing. You know, do what you need to do for your people. And I think that would be the best. Um, so anyway, I won't, I won't go there anymore with that. I just believe this has been a fiasco. I really don't think it's been handled well. And I don't think I've handled it well. And I've really, I've, I've had to go, um, I had to go to the Lord and just really say, I need some help with this. Don't pen me in. I, I don't like it. I, I work from home. I'm used to being here. I don't have to go out every day. Um, it's not... A necessity for me to do that however being told I can't go out I cannot do this I cannot go to the park I cannot uh, it didn't sit well with me so my prayer for myself was okay Lord there's something in me that's really stirred up right now and and, and I'm, I've been um, a little more agitated with some things I'm not really like that I'm a pretty peaceful person but um, some of this stuff's really got me, got me agitated. And, I, and I'm in the process, I would say I'm in the process of asking the Lord, um, you know, what's in me yet that isn't purified? What is in me that is so stirred up? Is it a good thing? Is it a not a good thing? Um, are, we, are we being prepared for times to come? Which, yes, I mean, if you read the Bible, you know, you know that this is a precursor for what we're going to be going through. In the end times, the end of days, I listen to a couple people that talk about certain things, and I'll finish my soup here in a sec, but I listen to Joy Pugh, her name is spelled J-O-Y-E-P-U-G-H, she calls it the end of days, um, I also listen to um, Anomaly, he's on um, Facebook, I listen to him a lot, and he's got some, just some good opinions and things going on, I listen to other people, you know, um, course I can't think of everybody right now but there are so many places where you can go to get some sound biblical teaching on exactly what's happening in the end times and I know in my heart in my spirit we've stepped over the line things are not going to be the way the way they were before I'm 64 I've never felt like this I've lived through Kennedy being shot the Vietnam War um, you know the towers going down other things that have happened Never have I felt in my spirit the way I do now. This world is not going to be the same that it was for my children growing up. It's not going to be the same place for my grandchildren. And I've gone in, the, I've gone in prayer um, for, we have six between us, and I've gone in prayer, and I've prayed over them in the future, and, and I've prayed, Lord, 10, 20, 30 years from now, Grandma's not going to be here, and I want my prayers to cover them for that time, because I don't know what it's going to be like. I really don't, and um, I don't know how fast this stuff's coming, but I know that 
you know, as they say, I've read the back of the book and we win, but still, you know, there's going to be persecution coming. There's going to be hard times coming. There are going to be, oops, my bank card <laughs> in my pocket. Oh no, it's my giant card. There's going to be, um, tribulation, uh, coming. We're going to have to go through some hard times. I think we're being tested and prodded a little bit right now, you know, just, um, to see how we're going to handle these things. And in some of this, I haven't handled it so well. I've been very agitated and upset with some things. And, you know, maybe a little too opinionated, but that's okay. We still can speak freely in this country right now. Anyway, I'll, I'll end that. But um, it, it's not been easy. It's not been easy for most everyone. It's been a change. It's been different. Some people handle it well. Some people, you know you know, are fine with things and are, are more compliant than I am. And that that's fine. That's not a wrong thing. It's just a different thing. You know, we handle things differently. So I'll stop talking about that. We're doing the best we can. We're healthy. Um, we think maybe Richard may have had, actually had the virus a couple months ago. Um, I never got anything. So we'll, we'll see. But I was surprised about one thing when I went to the store. We were on our last, guess what? We were on our last roll. <laughs> so they had they must have got a shipment in so I only took one <laughs> I only took one I thought what would we do if we really couldn't have toilet paper what did they do before oh, we don't even get catalogs anymore you know what are we gonna do anyway just just being silly but I think it's a time to think about things to pray about things if you don't know where you know your spirit's gonna, your, your spirit's gonna go somewhere when all is over when all is said and done and um, there's one door. His name is Jesus. And that's the only door we can go through. Just stir this and turn it up a little bit. I actually, I'm going to turn it up and get it boiling. And I'm going to go and um, put you on pause and chop up my cabbage. Yes, I did find an organic cabbage. And I needed to use that because it's been in the fridge for just a little bit. So I'm going to just chop that up and then I will come right back. All right. So I've just started cutting up the cabbage and I just, um, I make it in like little, it's not really shredded and it's not really cut up. It's kind of somewhere in between. Um, so I've just started cutting that up. That's about a third of it. And the pan is just getting ready to boil. So that's good. It'll go in there and cook. I'll be right back. Hi there. I'm back. Okay. I chopped up the, uh, the cabbage. There we go go <laughs> it's on, kind of on top of all the uh all the other ingredients so i'm going to just kind of mush it down in the pan and let it simmer now for a little while uh kind of between a medium and a simmer just to get it cooked up nicely then i'll turn it turn it down and let it simmer and just get all the flavors in there now if you want to add any other you know of your favorite seasonings or, or flavors spices or whatever of course, it's your pot of soup. You can do what you want. Um, I'm just going to put the lid on it. Let that go to work there. Um, so again, I'll read the directions. I mean the ingredients. One small head of cabbage. One, one to one and a half pounds of ground beef. One can diced tomatoes. And that was the 15 ounce. 14 and a half ounce. Eight ounce can of tomato sauce. Which I substituted for ketchup. Uh, I had the box of the beef broth, an onion, two tablespoons of vinegar. The recipe calls for a fourth cup of sugar, and I substituted two packets of stevia blend. Salt and pepper, and three cloves of garlic. And you mix everything together, and then you add in, um, you kind of mix the vegetables with the beef that's cooking in a little bit of water. and then you